All right, guys, we're gonna be working on this 2008 Toyota RAV4. Uh, we replaced the battery, the alternator ended up taking a dump on us, so we're gonna hurry and replace that. So I'm gonna try and do it as quick as I can so my daughter can stop driving my Suburban, but let me show you what I'm gonna try and do. Hopefully I don't have to do all the work that most of these other guys do, but. Let's get to it. All right, so first things first, disconnect your battery. I just took the cap, put it over the positive so nothing will happen. All right, so now we got the radiator support. Take off that. It's gonna be a 12. Uh, take off this 10 mil. You can also take off this 10 mil. That 10 mil, that 12, that 12. So we can take this whole support member we'll move it off to the side and then we'll take off this bottle so we'll just do this uh 10 millimeter bolt and we should be able to just move this bottle up and over hang it right here and then i'm also going to take this cover off it's just a clip press on so with that off you can see we got somewhat access to the alternator so the reason why we have to take off these brackets and everything is it'll give you some room to work with and then we can also move this radiator forward an inch maybe an inch not much and then we can get to some of the other brackets but it's going to be a little tight but i'm going to hurry and take those bolts off I mean, I don't think you need to see everything. So I'm just going to loosen up some of these bolts. All right, so once I get these bolts out, I'm going to take them out so I don't lose them. Set them up top, then I'm gonna go and start on these other bolts real quick. So let me get this swapped out and I'll have all these bolts taken out. Oh, you got that one right there too. That one, that one, that one. But I'm gonna hurry and take those off real quick. So now with all those bolts taken out that I showed you, take out your radiator clamp. That'll allow you to move the radiator up, get some room. And also with this piece taken off, I'll have to do that clamp out. Might be one more. All we're trying to do is just make it to where we can have some more room. So you can see, you just flop that over. So now we have access. We can move this radiator. This goes to your overflow from your radiator. So we can move that forward. We got some room. We can move it up if we have to. I don't want to disconnect that. So now, oh, looks like we got another. 10 mil. this bottle we can just position it up like that so now we got plenty of room to work on right over here 
All right, so now that we got to this point, you can see we got plenty of room uh, right here. Get it to where you can see it, bud. All right. Well, there's a pulley down in there. It's gonna be that one right there. Uh, we're gonna put a socket onto that guy right there. And then, there we go, focused. And that's your tensioner pulley for your belt. So uh, we'll put that socket on there, release the tension and take the belt. I'm gonna try and just slip it off of that pulley right there. It's just right up top, right underneath this tube right here. That's your radiator going from your radiator. So we'll just slide that belt off and then start taking off a couple bolts holding on the alternator. All right, so that little bolt down there for that tensioner pulley is a 14. And then all I'm gonna do is pull back. It's gonna relieve that tension. And you're gonna have to reach underneath. It's a little tight. Just a little bit. Got that belt off. Okay, so now that you got that belt off, now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect these wires right up here. Move that little boot. See that comes off. All right, and then that looks like it's gonna be a 10 mil to take off this power cord. All right, so now we gotta take off these 14 millimeter bolts holding on the actual alternator itself. I really don't wanna have to get rid of the coolant line, so. Maybe I'll grab an extension. See if I can get away with not having to disconnect a whole lot of unnecessary stuff. Yep. All right, so quick little update. Um, yes, we got that top bolt loosened up on the alternator. And then the one clear down there, we got that one. You're just gonna have to fill it. You can't really see it. Then you got this third one. Well, before we get to the third one, let me tell you, I did disconnect a lot of these electrical connections. So that way I can maneuver this out of the way. Makes it a lot easier. But you can follow my socket. See the shiny part right down there. And then way back in there, I'm trying to see where that little socket is right there that is a bolt right there that you got to take out as well so there is three so i took those two out and i was trying to fight it, it wasn't going to happen so just give you a heads up there are three and this one you have no room whatsoever So just giving you a heads up, it's going to be a pain in the ass to get this out. So now hopefully, got that bolt out. Oh, that little guy right there. 
and it is a 12 12 millimeter and the other ones were 14. so now let's see if we can actually take this out hopefully it'll move easier Nope, it looks like it's stuck on the top. So what I'm gonna do is pry the top off. There we go. <sighs> That's a nightmare, dude. I'm not sure if I need this to be on the other side. I'm pretty sure. I I don't know how I'm gonna get this thing out. They say you need to remove your radiator. And I really don't wanna do that. All right, so my boy had to put down the camera. It was not fun. So <laughs> he had to grab onto the radiator and the shroud and pull back pretty hard and you are just torquing left and right and trying to get it out. And it was a nightmare, guys. So, I mean, personally, I think I'll end up next route. I'll take out the radiator and you can just slide it out. It may take you an extra 30 minutes, but then again, you'll save yourself 45 minutes on trying to get it out. So now here's the crappy part is I got to put it back in. And I don't know how I'm going to do that. So. Not fun. I even disconnected your dipstick so I can move it off to the side. And I really don't want to disconnect the AC line. Yeah, that would make it a lot easier. But I just don't want to have to do a recharge on this. And we're trying to save money. So. Yep, we're gonna try and get this in, and there's the new one. I don't even wanna know if I wanna do a how-to on this. It's not, this is just me replacing an alternator. But there's the part number that I bought. 11322. <sighs> Ended up being like 260 bucks with a $30 core charge. So when we return that, we'll get 40 bucks back. All right, so now we're gonna try and fish it back in. We're gonna go in through right here. Hopefully there's enough space. You want somebody else to pull back on everything, possibly push up on this while somebody else is grabbing the alternator and taking it out. So it was not fun. I, would, I don't know if I'd recommend it this way. I'd almost rather just take out your whole radiator. So I'm going to put this back in. We'll get back to you when we get the radiator or the alternator in. All right, guys. So as you can see, yes, it was a pain in the ass getting it out. Getting it in wasn't too bad when you're not trying to hold the camera and you got an extra hand. So as you've seen, just... Pull those two apart and you'll be able to slide that alternator in and out you just it's easier with two people so i was trying to fight it just trying to film it and everything and so i just had to put it down but putting it back together same way as you took it apart so just keep that in mind other than that i mean it was pretty it wasn't too bad you got two people to pull stuff apart if not then just take the radiator out and I would have been done at least another hour sooner but all right thank you guys for watching if you want to see other alternator chains on this there's a couple other great videos that probably did a little bit better job so check them out all right thank you